YMT Mountain News at 6. A morning crash in Breathitt County shocked people in communities across the bluegrass. This is video of the scene on Kentucky 15 in Breathitt County near the Wolf County line this morning. Police say Rich McCune of Jackson crossed the center line and hit an oncoming UPS truck head on. McCune died at the scene and people who saw it happen say they thought he was turning into a driveway. And it wasn't until uh, the collision and the, the the Toyota camera come past her and she realized that it actually uh, struck the UPS truck head on. McCune's body is in Frankfurt for an autopsy. Now McCune was known by many throughout Breathitt County and the state. This is a photo of him in his teacher bio at George Rogers Clark High School in Winchester. He taught there, but he also made his mark in Breathitt County, where he was not only a teacher, but was a star football player back in the late 1980s. WYT's Connor James caught up with a close friend who's known him since fourth grade. Rich McCune's is a legacy that has been eternalized here in Breathitt County. But he was such a big man but he was such a kind and gentle man as well. McCune played football for the Bobcats through high school. He made his mark on the gridiron, being the only jersey ever retired from the team. Friends since grade school and uh, it, Rich is still the same, never changed in any way whatsoever and just a, a kind, loving person that would give you the shirt off his back. Brendan Miller called Rich one of his closest friends. He grew up with Rich and watched him become the first Bobcat to sign with UK. I mean, Rich, if he was your friend, he was your friend. And he was there to help you. And all of us remember him. And he's, one of, he's a loved individual just for the fact that he loved people and he, he wanted to help people. But Rich was much more. He moved from football to teaching. He taught at Breathitt County, then at George Rogers Clark High School. There's not a more kind-hearted person in the world than Rich McCune. Miller says McCune will forever be remembered for the man he was both on and off the field. In Breathitt County, Connor James, WYMT Mountain News. We do not have funeral arrangements for McCune yet. We'll have much more on his life tonight at 11. An undercover investigation led to the arrest of a Harlan County man. The investigation centered around sex crimes against children. State police arrested Stephen Ryan. They say he talked with a girl from the time she was 13 to 15 years old. Investigators say during their conversations on the Internet, Ryan asked the girl to take lewd photos and sent sexual images to the teen. Troopers say during a search warrant, Ryan admitted to the crimes. Ryan was also wanted out of Colorado for similar crimes. Searching for answers. Early this morning, the Johnson County Sheriff's Department responded to a call about a woman shooting her husband. When police got there, they found the man dead. WIMT's Lauren McCourt has the latest. Gunshots interrupting a quiet morning at the Meadowview Mobile Home Park. Shots, I hear shots and I just experienced. As neighbors were just beginning their day, it took an unexpected turn. It really shook me up. It was devastated. My bedroom's right here on the side and when I hear the shots, I just looked at the window. Shortly after the gunshots were fired, Johnson County Dispatch received a call. We received a call through our dispatch center that a lady had called and said she had shot her husband. Before officials arrived to the scene, Dosha and Jerry Clemens made their way out the door to see their neighbor sitting on her porch. Now, she said, I killed my husband. She was crying a little bit. She was hurt, scared. And, but as far as that, she didn't say nothing much. While details of the shooting are unknown at this time. Uh, just it's going to be a, a very intense and in-depth investigation. Law enforcement will continue to search for answers. In Johnson County, Lauren McCourt, WYMT Mountain News. The name of the woman and man involved have not been released yet, but we will, of course, continue to update you on this story as that information becomes available. A judge granted a change of venue in a Perry County murder case. Earlier this week, attorneys tried to seat a jury in the trial of James McIntosh. He's accused of shooting Danny Mullins multiple times earlier this year. Failure to seat a jury meant a mistrial. Right now, it's unclear what county the case might be tried in. That decision could come November 7th. One person charged in an unprecedented attack on a gay man in Harlan County is back behind bars. In 2013, a judge sentenced Mabel Ashley Jenkins to eight years in prison. From court documents, we learned she was apparently out on supervised release. 
and court officials claim she violated terms of that release. An arrest warrant was issued in September. U.S. Marshals arrested her yesterday. Jenkins pleaded guilty in a case where she and three others worked together to kidnap the gay man and then beat him. And we saw more sunshine today. We've seen a few clouds here and there, but overall we've seen those beautiful blue skies. We'll go ahead and take you to a few of those cameras, Interstate 64 and Moorhead. You could see a little bit of those clouds earlier today. Now seeing those mostly clear skies as we head into those evening hours. Looking outside the front porch here at YMT, not a cloud in the sky. 59 degrees. Look at those winds from the northwest, about 7 miles per hour. So bring in that cooler air, and that will continue as we head into the rest of those overnight hours. You're seeing those mid to upper 50s now, and some of us haven't even gotten into the 60s today. 52 into Wise, 57 in London and Williamsburg, and even a 55 into Jackson. It's been quiet throughout the day. You can see that here on satellite and radar. And we also have a frost advisory that is in effect from about 2 a.m. to 9 a.m. for those overnight hours tonight. Night. So temperatures are expected to drop to about those mid to upper 30s. Calm, clear skies, perfect ingredients right there for that frost advisory. So make sure to protect those plants and will we warm up as we head into tomorrow on the weekend? I'll have that answer coming up in just a little bit. All right, thank you, Paige. Preliminary plans have been announced to develop a resort at the Red River Gorge. The people behind the plan say there is not a design site or construction firm yet. The plan includes more than 100 rooms, private cabins, a pool, and more. But the proposal is drawing strong opinions on both sides. Shelby Lofton has the details. Business and landowners took their comments and concerns to county judges in the Kentucky Chamber of Commerce. And despite how they felt about plans to develop near the gorge, all were in agreement that they do not want the area to resemble Gatlinburg. The meeting's hosts, the Red River Economic Development Group, or RRED, wanted to clear up misconceptions and address the buzz around plans of a resort type of property. Right now, there is no set location, but RRED does have its sights set on nearly 900 acres of privately owned land. Hot topics in the room included the ecological impact the resort could have, increased traffic, a lack of potential resort employees, and how they would be trained. Some in the room were glad to be included in the conversation, while others felt it was a late invitation to a controversial discussion. I also feel good that they're getting the locals involved, and because that's who it really concerns. I mean, you know, we're we're uh, we're we want we want tourism is a big deal in this area. It's all we got actually. Here, the people that travel here to go hiking and stuff, it's going to be more traffic, and and to people that are staying at this lodge, they're not going to be bringing money into the red. So it's just I don't see it as a benefit at all to us locally. The board says the next step is signing with the firm. Chamber President Dave Atkinson says he hopes to have one nailed down by October 31st. In Powell County, Shelby Lofton, WYMT Mountain News. The RRED group says they plan to have a minimum of four town hall meetings. We'll post updates on their website, redriverkentucky.com, and encourage everyone who is interested to email them. Democrat Andy Bashir's push to legalize casino gambling in Kentucky is facing strong resistance from two leading Republican lawmakers. Bashir, who is of course running for governor, says Kentucky could reap $500 million or more in yearly revenue by allowing expanded gambling. He wants the money to support public pension systems. Today, Senate President Robert Stivers and Majority Floor Leader Damon Thayer said that the proposal would be dead on arrival in the Republican-dominated Senate. Thayer pushed for legalized casino gambling in the past. For the third time since summer, the United States Army released the name of an Eastern Kentuckian killed in the attack on Pearl Harbor. Hubert Hall was just 20 years old and worked as a Navy seaman and was assigned to the USS Oklahoma. The Floyd County man was killed when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. Unfortunately, unlike the past two, the Army does not have a photo of Hall. He will be buried next spring at the Punch Bowl. Baptist Health Corbin is holding its largest annual breast cancer support group this evening. That support group is held year-round, but October's turnout is typically the largest, with around 50 survivors and their families. Survivors say it is a night they look forward to each year. It's nice to uh, talk to someone else who's had breast cancer and understands what you're going through. It's not a sad event, though. It's a fun time. 
The support groups are held the third Thursday of each month. And we have that frost advisory in effect tonight, so those chilly temperatures look to continue into your Friday morning, but we're looking at a gorgeous weekend and another cold front that can move into the mountains. I'll we'll have more on that coming up in just a little bit. And as those temperatures continue to drop, the University of the Cumberlands helps collect food for pantries who need it most.